Oh my goodness gracious. The season's changing. Fall's coming. But don't worry. You have to worry about one thing because your guy, Ronald E. Smith, is still here talking to great people and seeing their journey and how far they've come. And my guest today is a perfect example of that. She lives by these three words. Be kind, be brave, and be awesome. And the only person that I could be speaking about is now the newly crowned Invicta FC Atomweight Champion of the World, Alicia Halfpipe Zapatella. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Oh, I'm doing well right now, you know? On this kind of day, you can't complain. At least I'm speaking with New York, so I can't imagine how it's looking over there with you. Um, it's actually pretty nice out today. Uh, the trees are changing colors. It's, it's really pretty out. It's a nice fall day. See, exactly. Fall is coming right through us, so we're all just getting ready for that. Mm -hmm. And like everything else, I'm getting real. We just love hearing the journeys of so many people, whether it be film critics, athletes, everybody in between, just talking about where they come and where they want to be in the future. And with you, Alicia, as I remember in your dream board, you've accomplished a big goal of yourself, and you are now the Invicta FC champion of the Adam Wade division. <laughs> Before anything else goes, let's just go about, has that sunk in yet? When you look at yourself in the mirror, has that sunk in to say that I am the champ of the Adam Wade division? Yes, yeah, yeah that, that's sunk in. And it's, it's pretty cool, but I have to set bigger goals now. I'm like, I'm itching to do more things. Like, I, I'm going to go travel for a little bit, but I have to make some bigger goals because seeing that is very nice, but mm -hmm. I want to accomplish more. <laughs> I mean, look, for any other fighter that's, that's fighting up the game and climbing up the ladder, that's a big step, you know? And for, especially for you. You have, you, you have always been a person that has always said what you want and put it in the universe. And even if, if some people think that that is so far out of reach, you are, are shouting saying, I want that. Mm -hmm. And now that you have it, you're already telling yourself, all right, this chapter's done. Yep. I'm ready to keep climbing up the next one. Yep. Yeah. And like everything else though, you can't accomplish something right then until it be planted, like the seed needs to be planted before everything grows in. So mm -hmm. with everything else, let's just go with that because you've always preached about saying, nothing ever stopped you ever since you were five years old. Mm -hmm. So what about that? What was Alicia growing herself as a person that young and what things did she go through at that young of an age? So when I was really young, I started wrestling because I saw my brother doing it and I saw all of his friends doing it and it, it didn't make any difference to me that I was a girl. I, I wanted to go out and have fun too. Like that, that's just kind of where it all started for me. And then I started getting good at it and I faced a lot of adversity. People wanted their like dads would, would tell their kids to, to come out and hurt me when I was young because I shouldn't be out there because I'm a girl. Um, like show, show her why a girl shouldn't be wrestling. Well, most of the time I would go out and I would pin the guys and they, they would end up leaving the mat crying. And I, I was the only girl on my high school team. I think I only wrestled like, I want to say maybe two girls in high school. And I had like 140 some wins in high school. With all that in high school, you know, just deciding for yourself to do that. Like, first of all, you said your, you saw your brother doing that, you know, so that, that inspired you. And you know how every sibling is. You see big brother, big sister doing something. You're like, oh, snap, that looks cool. I want to try it out, go. Mm -hmm. But how did everyone else feel about that? How did your parents first ex idea about that when you're saying, I want to do that? So my, it's funny that you asked, my parents were completely all about it. Um, my dad would baby me 
And my mom would not allow him to do that because she, she knew that if, if I was going to do a sport where I was going to get so much controversy, I couldn't be babied. I had to be pushed harder than the boys did. And, um, I think, I think that with starting and being able to perfect, um, a martial art, it's, such a young age and get such big opportunities at such a young age there's a lot of work behind the scenes that nobody sees like I didn't have like that many vacations or that many fun summers like I was always wrestling always I went at a lot of places and I've seen a lot of the United States right. and but it's all for wrestling. But you also brought up something that a lot of people don't see. They don't see the building blocks of how everything is grown. And I can imagine for everything, all the sacrifices at that young of an age to do this one sport. Was there any point, was there any point though? Did you ever feel resentful of the things you were doing, like things you would miss? and be like, I wish I would be doing this and that with my friends? Or were you just so gung-ho about I want this and nothing else? I think that for the most part, I was pretty gung-ho on I want this and nothing else. I think that in my later teen years, I, I kind of started to get a little bit jealous. Like, all right, well, I'm not doing the things that everybody else is doing, but I was making some big accomplishments. Like, who else out here is, like, winning national, like, getting national championships who else is doing you know everything that they actually set out to do um so there's a lot of give and take with it i guess and that's the sacrifices that a lot of people don't want to really talk about mm -hmm. but with everything else that comes with it then it comes to the hard decision of because let's let's say paint the picture of your graduation year was what year um 2013 when did the idea then for you to think of, or at least the thought came of MMA? Like where did even that even transit through your mind? So I would say actually to actually try it would be in 2014, but um, I had watched it on TV in high school and I thought that I would do really well at it, but um, I actually in 2014, like, Fully, all in. I think you're like all, all, all of us because like as for myself I first saw MMA was with the ultimate fighter that's what was my first I real mind of the sport but then my first insight of it was when a lot of people catch on to a fighter mine was Anderson Silva so mm -hmm. who was that one person and maybe two people that when you first watched it you're like I love them I want to actually do what they're doing so one of them was definitely Ronda Rousey because growing up, like that was the first girl that was really shown. Yes. Like this girl's out here doing this. And I saw her throwing people, which I wrestled, but I, I did a lot of freestyle. So I really like throwing people. And I'm like, that's pretty cool. That's I want to learn. Oof. Yeah. Like I could throw people. Now I just have to learn how to sub them. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I would say mainly her, but there, there are some that, like, I would like to, I don't know, be able to apply my wrestling or learn their grappling. I, th I think it's just kind of an accumulation of, like, seeing things that I like in different fighters and being like, I want that, I want that, you know. And you know the transition from wrestling to MMA, it's always could be difficult. For some, it's, e it's an easy transition. Like, it, it, for some, it just comes easy. Others, mm -hmm. it takes a little longer for them. Because yeah. it's about learning other things. Because it's not just one specific thing anymore. You're learning everything. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. what was what was your hardest transition to going to MMA? Uh, it would definitely be learning the striking. Um, of course. <laughs> and and not actually not really even the striking because I'm not afraid to punch somebody or get hit. I would say it's more so the head movement and the footwork. Cause definitely moving my head and keeping my hands up was the hardest thing for me. My footwork has gotten a lot better recently and I've been able to like tie my head movement and my footwork together and it's it's cool. It's a cool evolution. With the process of you transitioning from wrestling to going to MMA, how are you able to balance your life? Because you know, like everything, you know, MMA sometimes doesn't pay all the bills, you know, so you got to do other things to keep you afloat or just to keep yourself 
on track to keep doing what you what you love. Mm -hmm. so what what were you doing on the other side to keep yourself going? So for a little while, I well actually for a while, I was working at an elementary school. I was working with special needs students, so I was doing that on the side and then also um, training as a professional fighter. But then at <laughs> I guess COVID, when that yeah, happened, yeah, I yeah, made yeah, of course, made the train. Has. Yep, I made the transition to being a full-time fighter, and when I was able to go back to work, I made the decision not to, and I want to be able to just fully be a professional fighter. If you've seen how much I've leveled up this year, or between my first fight this year and then my last two fights this year, um, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a noticeable difference. What did, what, what did that feeling feel like when you decided all right, I'm not coming back. Um, it felt so empowering because although I loved my job and it was very rewarding, I need to follow my goal. And I, I think that to be able to just make that choice was <laughs> very rewarding. People don't get when they see you on the internet, like they see you train, fight, go, ready to go. But mm -hmm. what's the work that they don't see that they're like, you you don't get it unless you're actually here doing it day by day. Um, I would say that might be all of the mental work that goes into this. Um, there's a lot of ups and downs of going and fighting another person. It makes you face a lot of things within yourself that either you can run from them or and just keep avoiding the same things or you can face some things within yourself and it actually makes the process a, a little bit easier it's fighting is a very humbling experience um yeah it has caused me to look at myself a lot and make a lot of changes in my life obviously what changes would would, would did fighting force you to go into or you had to well for a while, I just coasted with my wrestling, and then I lost two fights in a row, and it kind of, it forced me to look at the mistakes that I was making as an athlete and as a person. I had to hold myself accountable. I had to figure out what exactly I need to be doing. <laughs> Basically, every moment of the day, if I actually want to turn this into my life. And look, no one likes to lose. Like, who, I don't think you can find one person on this planet that will tell you that lo they love losing. Yeah. But losing also comes experience and also reflection to be like, all right, why am I losing? What happened? And then you're like, okay, I, either, I, either I'm being st stuck on myself and I won't, won't change, mm -hmm. or I got to force myself, to be like, look, you got to learn, or you're going to keep slipping up. When you, did, when you almost decided to join... Invicta, because you know Invicta is a very, very. I, I can't say no, no, no more good words about Invicta and Shannon yes. with everything they've done, and also the fighters who have come out of it, who have transitioned <laughs> and gone to UFC and Bellator and just blossomed their own careers. So, the moment the day came when you did get signed to Invicta, what was that feeling, and did you ever second guess yourself about joining them? I was so excited when I got the call for Invicta. Um, I was waiting for that day for a while. Um, and actually getting to fight for them, uh, honestly, it, it was one of the best experiences of my life. I had been watching them, like, ever since I got into MMA and started to learn anything about it, I heard that there was an atom weight division, which would right. be perfect for me. And then I heard about Invicta, and I started watching it, and... Um, then obviously I figured out who Jin Euphre was, and um, I'm a little bit upset that I didn't get to fight her, but it's okay. <laughs> I really like her. Um, she's a really good person. We're actually friends. We, you know, that's dope. It's all right. It 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 did played out how it how it was supposed to, and yeah. It meant so much because also too I I read too seeing that there's also a fighter in Invicta that you also really liked. And you also kind of like admire and far, you know, Thug Rose Nama Yunus. Rose is one of my favorite fighters like ever. She just seems like such a nice 
person also on top of the fact that she's a badass oh yeah oh, oh are you kidding me like she plays zero games and even when Jawan yeah. tried to get in her mind didn't work nothing didn't work nothing about it yep yep when you were in the division, you're in the anime division, and you're, you were just doing your thing, and then you just you brought up before, you lost those two fights. Mm-hmm. What, where was your mind with that? You know, did you, did you doubt yourself about if this was going to continue? Um, well, when I, when I lost my first fight, I knew that the girl was just better than me that day. Um, I knew that if I fought her again with a different game plan and I gained a little bit of size, I, I would be able to figure it out. But that day, she was better than me. Um, the second time when I lost, so I, I just kind of accepted that one. Okay. Um, and it also kind of took a lot of pressure off because up, at, up until that point, I hadn't lost any fights. Then the next fight, I, I um, thought that I won that fight and the judges gave it to the other girl. So that one... That one hurt me pretty bad, actually. So that caused me to look at a lot of stuff. <laughs> how does that feel when, you, as a fighter, you know, when it goes to judges, no longer in your control, you know? So you sit, you're sitting there, you know, next to, next to the, the fighter, and you're just in your mind, did I win? Did I win? Mm-hmm. So what, what, what is that process for you going when I have no control on what's going to happen? I I don't like I don't like decisions. Usually I no, win no by decisions, but like I I don't like them. Um that one was over in Japan, so I should have lowered my expectations by a lot, but I you know, I was still hopeful cuz I felt like I won the fight, but that's all right. Um going into my next fight though, I realized that that was a turning point in my career. Either I needed to Either, well, I need to win that fight or else my career was fucking basically over. Why, what makes you fully say that to yourself? Like, was that, was that like a do or die kind of situation for yourself to, to say like, I need this or I got to think about doing something else? Um, kind of, it's kind of what it felt like. Cause I was on a two fight losing streak and I was like, wow, well, if I lose three, that'd make me five and three. And I wouldn't really know. So I had to prove it to myself that I was, uh, that, you know, I was who I thought that I was and I could do the things that I thought that I could do. And that's a huge thing about um, winning the belt that, you know, that was huge to me. It wasn't really about anybody else. It was proving to myself that I was worthy of you know, greatness. And I actually told the Invicta um, people before, in in the interview with Invicta before the fight, I told them that uh, I felt winning the belt was the start of a new chapter. That says so much. I'm speaking with Alicia Zapatella. If you're enjoying this talk that we're having and you just want to follow her and just get to know her a little bit more, go ahead and follow her on Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram at Alicia Zap. And if you really want to get to know her and just see the fun side of her, I recommend you check her YouTube channel at half pint 16. That's half pint 16. Now you just said that this was going to be the big chapter for yourself, that you were going to win this title. Yeah. And, and now let's just fast forward ourselves to when the moment came when you did get the title shot. You mm-hmm. know, I can imagine the call you got when he says, all right, here we go. It's, up, mm-hmm. it's, 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 it's for you. Mm-hmm. But you're also doing this in a pandemic. Mm-hmm. You know, so... How was all the transitions from fighting through live crowds to now? Because you did it before, from the beginning of the year, yeah. but now it's just for a title fight. Yeah. And it's double pressure with that. I really liked, I actually really liked it. I could hear my coach the whole time. Um, he's very distinct. Uh, his, his voice, you can hear it anywhere, even if there's a crowd. But the fact that there wasn't a crowd, it was, it was really nice. Um, I could hear the commentators, which I was used to from the fight before since I fought in the pandemic earlier um, in the year. So that wasn't bad. I, it was kind of just a glamorized um, sparring session and mm. I got the belt for it. Um, I, I actually really liked it. Uh, and I also like the five rounds more than the three rounds. The night before the fight, after the, more after, just during after the weigh-ins, mm-hmm. when it's now your time, that last sleep before it's time to fight. 
where was your mind at? Where was your, where was you, you thinking about everything that was about to come the next day, everything you visualized and hoping to gain? What was Alicia thinking about? So I tried as hard as I could not to even think about the belt. Mm -hmm. I just thought about, I'm fighting this other woman. That's all I'm doing. And I, well, I meditate a lot. So I usually, I get um, a lot of fight nerves. So I will meditate and uh, those all kind of go away and I can kind of just be in the moment. And it allows me to be more honest with myself because, um, okay, I have devoted 20 years to this. I've devoted my entire life at this point to this. Um, I can train with my jujitsu coaches reg on, on the regular two black belts regularly. I can train with my, with my boxing coach. He's small too. All three there of them are go. small. I have a training partner that is, very good i've flown in another training partner Jeez, and i have other guys that are 125 pounders so if i'm being honest with myself i have put in every single ounce of work that i could and i felt that i was good enough and i was exactly where i needed to be to win the fight and if i had didn't win the fight then i guess that i wasn't good enough but i trusted that that there was nothing more that i could do and with that, I mean, everything that you set up and put out and believe the next day, it was go time. Mm -hmm. And you put in, it was a, oh, you both didn't play. You and Ash did not play any games when you fought each other. Mm -hmm. But then it came. Yep. That moment came when you won it. Yep. And we all know experience of when the moment you were so happy, you were just cheering your, cheering your butt off. Huh? Now, when you came home, and you, you celebrate with your friends, your family, and you hug, all that good stuff. But then when you're now, you're just with yourself, holding the title in your hand. What would it feel like? It feels pretty cool. Um, I'm not one to really celebrate, uh, like have like big celebrations or anything. So people did have celebrations for me and that was nice. Um, but being able to just kind of, sit down and see my belt is actually pretty cool especially the first couple of days the first week being able to actually look at and feel my belt was awesome <laughs> I bet. Oh. I, yeah it, it was my screensaver for <sighs> weeks maybe maybe like fucking like two years mm -hmm. like it, it I've, i found i went through like old um journals from like college and stuff where it would say Alicia half finds Zapatella in Invicta FC Adam weight world champion up in the corner and I found those like a couple of months ago during right before fight fight camp I think and, and now it's just it's pretty cool so the moment and when you when you accomplish that you are the Invicta FC Adam weight champion no ifs ands or buts about it it just looks back now, everything you sacrificed for, everything that you took a chance on, everything that hurts. Mm -hmm. but could you say that it was all worth it in the end so far? Oh, every single second was worth it. Um, that, that's actually one of the, the first things that I thought about after I won the title is that it was, it was all worth it. And I know that winning this title is going to bring a lot of opportunities into my life. Um, so it's, yeah, I would say everything was worth it. And now with everything you have with you up in your hand, you know, now sky's the limit for what you can obtain. Mm -hmm. And I saw that too. You wanted to do other things that not just in the sport. Mm -hmm. You would love to do, even do on the other side of the table. You want love, you would love to commentate. You would love yep. to be an announcer. So I look. That is nothing to, nothing to talk about because that's something that anyone would love to do. So yeah. I, do, I would love to know what it inspired you in your heart to be like, I can totally do that. Well, I know a lot about the sport and I've, I spent some time on Twitch actually commentating fights that uh, they would, they would pick the fights and they would just be simulated fights. Um, so it was on the computer computer and I had a blast doing that um I think that I could actually be a pretty fun commentator um 
And I also know that I need to set up other avenues for myself within fighting. I know a lot about martial arts. So I don't know, might as well get me on screen. I really like making videos. Um, I have a great time being on camera. I like I don't know if I'm being honest. I kind of like being the center of attention when I can be. So if, if I can get on there and talk to people, I would have a great time with it. And I'm very knowledgeable. Hey, look, you're a content creator. You know, that's yeah. the one thing that some people don't even have experience because you have basically both. You can yeah. handle being on screen. You can, but you can also too handle behind the scenes of handling a video. So mm -hmm. you know the backwards and inwards of this. And there's a lot of fighters who have made that transition. You know, Angela Hill's just starting that. Paul Felder, Michael Bisping, you know, so many fighters who have who've done it and they have, they have transitioned so well with it. Mm -hmm. And you, you could definitely see yourself. Hey, look, you can see yourself doing that for Invicta. Their champ not only fighting, but she's also doing on the announcing. Yep, I would love to do that for Invicta. Like, Invicta, any, any day. <laughs> <laughs> just ring my number you know me i'll yep. be there yep. <laughs> with the idea of you know you want to continue growing more than just that it's also like everything else because there's nothing wrong with us continue building on things you want to achieve mm -hmm. a goal would also be for you to fight for the ufc mm -hmm. and as of right now you know this i know this everybody knows this you know as of today they don't have an atom weight division Right. And look, it took them how long? Long time just to get a featherweight division. And even that division is still like hanging by a thread. But I feel there is more fighters that could come into the Adam Wick division if mm -hmm. they if they put the work inside of it. I definitely think that if if they were going to put the work in and actually build the division, the Adam Wick division could be phenomenal. It 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 would draw in a lot of fans. It would be great there's a lot of straw weights who, who would love to drop down to go to adam weight and there's exactly. so many fighters internationally who would be so great to come just to fill up the division yep so but for you though <laughs> just to play devil's advocate if uncle dana never does it and it's just a straw weight division still there mm -hmm. would you go um maybe later in my career uh I think there are some other avenues that uh, actually do have atom weight, so got to look at my possibilities. Can you see yourself going to one? Maybe. Mm. That's, a, that's a possibility. Mm. Um, I did see that their um, champion is yep. pregnant, although I would have really liked to fight her. That would have been a dope fight to see. Yeah, yeah, it would have been great. I've been I've been keeping an eye on her for a while now. So, um, she actually fought a girl that I was supposed to fight in China at 125 for the belt, but then that girl showed up five pounds heavy. So we had to fly in a girl from, uh, I think it's Tiger Muay Thai on a day's notice. I knew nothing about her. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, look at the, wow, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, and th and that girl's now at 105 and 115. So, but. Yeah. Life's crazy. My, my goodness gracious, man. She's Louise. So, <laughs> so you're willing then to fully say if that division is not there yet in the UFC, you're willing to continue to fight in other places. If God yeah. willing, who knows, it does come or not. Yeah. I mean, who knows? Maybe someone throws me a good offer. I, I don't know. Right. Maybe later in my career when I'm bigger and I can't really make 105 anymore, maybe I will go up to 115. Who knows? Um, maybe I just feel like gaining some weight, gaining some muscle, going to 115. I don't know. Um, but I'm definitely open, I don't know, to offers. You, you can't turn certain things down, you know? No. Uh, the fight game but, is a short game. Yep, exactly. And that's something, too, I, I would just love to bring up with you about the, this game, which is the fight game, you know. You see so many stories of fighters who have grown in the sport. And, you know, the whole thing is that you want to get in, fight, win, hopefully win a title. And also, but then at the end of the day, you want to leave the game in a good space. And you hope you, you don't, you don't want to stay too long. Right. Right, exactly. So for a sport that you love and that you just are so happy to be inside of, 
how long do you want to be in it? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I, I don't want to be fighting that long. Um, I would like to get other parts of my life set up, I guess, or at least even fucking started. But <laughs> all I've done is, all I've done is focused on, um, is, is on fighting. So I, I need to focus on other parts of my life, which is actually another reason why I'm taking some time off. But, um, I, not, not a ridiculous amount of time lo longer, maybe five years i would say maybe a little bit longer mm -hmm. um might take a break in there who knows i don't know you know it's it's a very it's a thing that you know it's a scary thing to think about because you know it's so yeah. far in the future but it's yeah. also a thing that how many times you see so many fighters like what recently there was one fighter i think her name was jesse rose clark and she talked about how much money she has in her bank account and it's you kidding me like how much money you your purse you make and then you find out like all the bills you have to pay, all the, the you know the training partners you got to pay up, everything that comes with it, and you're still not settled to be like I can retire soon and then be happy. Yep, it's scary. It's a very scary feeling. Definitely, which is why I'm trying to set up other other of things course. of mine. I um I actually would love to to be to get my channel on YouTube a lot bigger because I grew up watching YouTube, so making YouTube videos is actually a big passion of mine. Okay, I love Jim. Yes, <laughs> okay, I, I, I heard about that. I, I, was, I was like, oh, you know what? And at first I was surprised, but then just seeing more of your videos and seeing your personality, I was like, okay, I can definitely see that Jen, why you like Jenna. But why are you so, I say so inspired to be a content creator on YouTube? I would love to know this. Um, I, I would say because back when I was younger, um, I had, I don't know, depression. We all get depressed, right? Of course. So I guess, I guess that when I didn't feel like I had anybody, I never really had that many friends. I do now. I found my tribe. I found my people. So tribe. things are good. Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> um, but back then I didn't really have people. So I would watch a lot of YouTube videos. I would find um creators that I thought that I could vibe with and that and I don't know I really like following their life so who was now, now who were the, now what were the YouTube channels that you were most like every day these are the ones that there's the comedy ones there's the animations mm -hmm. there's the DIYs what was yours so <laughs> um I would watch a lot of obviously Jenna Marbles mm -hmm. loved her um then later down the road, her boyfriend, Julian Salamita, love him. Um, I would watch a lot of actually hair braiding videos because when I was younger, I played soccer. So I would always learn how to braid my hair different Aww, ways. Oh, look at this. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I love, love Joe Rogan, but that was a little bit older too. Um, I, I I liked Shane Dawson when I was younger too. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't, I don't really like him anymore but. i know i get it i completely yeah. understand <laughs> um I, I don't know other than that I would, there has to be a couple more that i'm forgetting <laughs> but <sighs> the whole thing about being a content creator is is basically you're allowing yourself to be open and you're mm -hmm. just seeing allowing millions of people around the world it, when they see you to be you that's mm -hmm. basically it you know you're not hiding in nothing else and you're allowing them to see, the, especially you as a fighter, you're allowing you to see a different side of you besides everything they see on the internet and on TV and the cage. I guess so like when, when I make painting videos, I'll probably be watching a lot of artsy stuff on YouTube and then I'll get inspired and like, I'm going to paint something, I'm going to record it. Um, you, that, you, can kind of, you can kind of tell where I'm at mentally by what videos I'm making because if I'm like, if I've been like setting up a room for a while, I'm going to videotape what I just did. <laughs> um, if, if I've been feeling artsy, I'm going to videotape myself doing some, uh, you know, some fucking painting. And then like, if I've been buying a lot of crystals, I might, oh might videotape that. Oh my goodness. Oh, see, oh, you, see, look, you are a content creator. Look, look, look at this. Yeah. <laughs> now, look, look, at, again, as any content creator, there's, also, there's the filming. 
And then there's also the editing, which, you know, depending on how you make your videos, it can be a whole different process. So first off, how have you been learning that? Like, have you been doing using with Adobe, Final Cut, or, or e even, even iMovies? What have you been learning with yourself just to improve for yourself with editing? Um, I use Adobe Premiere Pro. Or yes. Pro. Yeah. Um, I need to, I want to learn how to edit a lot better, but I've been using YouTube to actually learn how to. <laughs> You're not the only one. Don't, don't, be, it's all good. <laughs> you want to, you want to know an interesting story about YouTube? Please. Okay. So I don't know if you knew this, but my coach actually, so he, he's like, he's one world. He's beaten very, a lot of very high name people um i'm pretty sure he went to the abcc trials and, and did very well oh, um he's not actually affiliated under anybody he taught himself jujitsu off of youtube get out so the person that i learned my my jujitsu from learned it from youtube <laughs> y'all hearing this my um so i have gracious. I have two jujitsu coaches. One is Christian Woodmansey, very, very well known, um, black belt. Um, the other one is James Gray, and yeah, he he learned his from YouTube. But That's we get a incredible. lot of controversy for it. But clearly, our jujitsu works. <laughs> I mean, look, controversy. But guess guess what? If it works, it works. Huh? You it's it's not about how you do it; it's just how you get it done, and. That's amazing. I, wow. Yeah. Talk about how the world just changing. My goodness gracious, YouTube. Yeah. Um, our our jujitsu is actually pretty, pretty fucking solid. But, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking with Alicia Zapatella and I'm telling you right now, guys, we've learned so much about her, you know, just seeing her growth and how she's just gone and how she's become the person that she is right now and the things that she wants to achieve in the future. And I want to just end it right here, but before I do, there's some things I just want to just bring up with you. And I always do with all my guests. I call this the shout out time. In this time, we look back at the people that have helped us, has picked us up when we couldn't walk anymore. And also to the people that we've walked, that have gone who faded during the, our path of the journey, but we still remember them and we keep them to our heart. So right here, right now, I want you to give show love and appreciation to people that care about you so much. Go ahead. The people that care about me so much? Oh, uh, I, I know there's there. Come on, don't, don't hide it. Um, so there, there's a lot of them. Um, yeah, where do I start? All right, first thing, my parents. They have always backed me, always. They're my biggest supporters. My brother, he inspired me when I was little to be a wrestler and then turn into a badass that I am mm. today. Um, I, then James Gray. So my coach saw me at my first fight ever and came up and told me that one day he thought that I would be a world champion. And then a couple months later, I checked out his gym <laughs> and I switched and look at me now he turned me into world champion so uh, yeah <laughs> uh, I want to thank Christian Woodmansey he um he used to be my tra favorite training partner now he opened up a gym at Logic and uh he's he helped me with my training camp and I think yeah he's gonna help me with some other stuff so I really appreciate everything he's done he yeah um also still probably one of my favorite training partners but my favorite training partner of all tabitha watkins back girl she is absolutely phenomenal so funny story we were supposed to be each other's first fight and then james gray found out that i was a wrestler i wasn't just a um <laughs> i i wasn't just a fighter who had no fights i actually had quite a bit of a background um so he canceled that fight <laughs> um and now she's my training partner and we actually are gonna live together we just got a place together so oh, look at that. yeah we we train together <laughs> at, at least like it's funny that way wow yeah yeah um and then um 
I don't know, Brian Fornicero, Tim Farr, um, Danny Berry helped me with my jujitsu a lot early on, even though he hasn't really been involved in the later part of my career. He's helped a lot. Um, my strength and conditioning coaches, the, the reason why my, my footwork has moved, I mean, has changed so much. Um, Chris Down, he is an absolute genius. This man, uh, I, I could send him anything that I want I want to do. He will spend hours watching it. He will figure out how to emulate it. He will figure out what exercises to do to just make that um, better and apply to my game. So um, big thank you to him and um, his wife, Hillary Down. She's my massage therapist. Of course, I need recovery. And then one last one, my nutritionist, Mary Vance. Um, she helps me with everything. She is absolutely phenomenal when it comes to diet. And actually, she's just helped my life, honestly. She, she changed my life. So a huge thank you to her. And with this as well, when a moment in your life, you said that you were in a very dark place. Mm -hmm. You were just in your, in your own. Mm -hmm. And you were just trying to find your way to get back. To where you are now and to where the spot you was in before, reflecting on it, how, how is that coming full circle to right now? I am proud of myself for getting through everything bad that I ever um, endured in my life. And I am proud of the strong woman that I've become just being able to endure it and keep uh you know pulling myself out of um out of depression to just do the things that I need to do and honestly um journaling getting everything out very um proud of, I'm proud of myself for doing the work that needs to be done instead of running from things and hiding from things look at that and that's inspiring for a lot of people you know what you're doing a lot of people are going to look at that and be like she can do it. I know I can do it. And last thing, before we let you go, <laughs> if Alicia can talk to young five-year-old five half pint Alicia and everything she was growing up to be, everyone's telling her she can't do it. Everyone's telling her that you don't belong here. What would you tell her to give her confidence to look to, towards the future? Um... <laughs> If I'm being honest, little five-year-old Alicia would expect this from me. Little five-year-old Alicia would not be surprised by what I'm doing. Um, she'd probably ask me why, why I didn't do it sooner. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, yeah, I've always been a very determined person. So I, I think that five-year-old me would have been proud of me. And that's what we love to hear. My name is Ron E. Smith. This right here is the Invicta FC Adam Witt champion of this world, Alicia Zapatella. And y'all, I think we just got real. Thank you very much. Like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you.